You never know what kind of horror movie you are going to get whenever you watch a Blumhouse Productions horror movie. It could either be one of the best horror movies of the year, or it could be laughably bad and turn more into a comedy movie instead of a horror movie. Well, this list is going to be the good side of Blumhouse because it's 10 Blumhouse horror movies that you should watch this weekend if you haven't seen them yet. There will be no spoilers throughout this video so you do not have to worry about any movies being spoiled. I will list the different streaming services the movies are offered on if they are in the description below with the timestamps of the movies. With that being said, here we go. Number 10. Split. 2016. Coming in at number 10 on this list is the psychological thriller Split. Split follows three teenage girls, Casey, Claire and Marcia, who are abducted in broad daylight by a strange man and taken to a secluded basement and locked in a room together. They don't understand what this man wants with them, but they will soon discover this man suffers from a severe case of dissociative identity disorder and has 23 different personalities living inside of him some of the identities being much more sinister than the others, and these are the ones that are controlling him the most. There is a 24th identity named the Beast that will emerge in all its glory towards the end of the film that the other sinister identities want to feed the girls to and that's why they are kidnapped. The girls must fight tooth and nail and also work together to find a way to escape or else they will be dinner for the Beast. Do they have what it takes to take down the Beast and escape the place alive? Number 9. Sinister. 2013. Professional true crime author Ellison Oswald, father of cool teen Trevor and adolescent Ashley, moved his family once more, to a small Pennsylvanian town, without telling his loving wife Tracy that it is to research his next book, their new home being the central site of the mysterious crimes from the plot, relating to the open case of missing local adolescent Stephanie Stevenson. The sheriff clearly would prefer him to leave, but his deputy, a diehard fan of Ellison's, offers research help. It becomes scarily real when many spooky events or strange coincidences begin happening around the new home with his son Trevor at the center of it all. Trevor gets many terrifying nightmares and then Ellison stumbles into a box in the attic that has many Super 8 home movies just waiting to be watched. Once Ellison starts watching the movies, he begins to uncover the sinister ordeals that had taken place in the home before, and that may have taken place all over the country. Now the question begs to ask, will he be able to get his family to safety before his children are the next target of the mysterious demon, Bugwell? Number 8. Ouija Origin of Evil 2016 while this movie is a sequel to another Blumhouse movie, Ouija, this one is 50 times better than the first movie and actually has a fear factor to it that was lacking exponentially in the first one. In this one, a widowed mother and her daughters bolster fake seances to make money off of grieving people that are trying to speak to their deceased loved ones when in all reality it is just a show. One of the daughters recommends to the mother that they should add a Ouija board to their seances and once they begin doing this, strange things begin happening around the house and the younger sister starts believing in ghosts and that she is communicating with her dead father, but not everything is at it seems. Once the spirit gets in close enough to the daughter, it has her go to the basement, and free his tormented soul to wreak havoc on everyone it encounters. Will the family be able to lock the spirit back up or will it run free for good? Number 7. The Purge. 2013. I think we all know what the purge is at this point as some are even clamoring for it to enter our actual reality, but let's hope that doesn't ever happen. If you didn't know, the purge is where the government lets all crime be legal for 12 hours one night every year hoping to let everyone purge their hateful crimes so the rest of the year can be peaceful. In the opening movie in the extended series, we follow James Sandin who is a successful salesman for high-end security systems that many buy to use for the purge night. Well, in a twist of irony, James's house is broken into on purge night due to his son feeling bad for a begging victim that was outside. What ensues is a cat and mouse game between some hateful purgers and the Sandin family that is just trying to make it through the night alive. To do this, James will have to find where this man is hiding inside of his house or his family will be the replacement victim. Can he do it? Number 6. Get Out. 2016. Chris Washington, a talented young African-American photographer, prepares to meet his white girlfriend Rose Armitage's parents during a weekend in their Lake Pontaco mansion. Chris and Rose have been together for five months now, and the Armitages are completely unaware that their daughter's sweetheart is black. But when Chris finally meets Rose's mother, a psychiatrist who specializes in hypnosis, and her father, a brain surgeon, he will soon realize that the family is surrounded by black servants in the total privacy of their magnificent, yet secluded estate in the woods. Little by little, as the friendly and polite ambience gives way to an indistinguishable, rather unrecognizable threat, 
The unsettling mood coupled with sheer dread will quickly disturb the family's sickening magic trick. Chris will get hypnotized by Rose's mom one night, while taking a walk outside because she tells him that she can hypnotize him to kick his smoking habit. He is against it at first, but then she taps her tea glass and the magic goes to work. The next day, Chris has no desire to smoke any cigarettes so the hypnotism must have worked, but he may wish that never happened just a few hours later. What could the Armitages be hiding? And why is there an off-limits, locked room that leads to the basement? Number 5. Megan. 2022. In what some would call a knock of the Chucky series comes Megan which also involves a mysteriously vicious doll that is out for blood. Following a freak accident resulting in the death of her parents, orphaned eight-year-old Katie is sent to live with Aunt Gemma, a brilliant, career-driven roboticist. But new beginnings are always challenging for anyone, let alone a girl who had just lost her parents. As a result, forced to make a pivotal decision under deadline pressure, Gemma puts forward her pioneering, secret Megan project an imperfect, lifelike android that could not just act like a doll, but could act like a best friend. And as the risky decision proves to be a lifesaver, the traumatized girl develops a profound bond with the machine, redefining the meaning of family and friendship. The question is, however, can Gemma imagine what her invention is capable of? Megan might just be as vicious as Chucky when it's all said and done. Number 4. Happy Death Day. 2017. In this Groundhog Day-like thriller, the film follows Tree Gel Man who is your average everyday stuck-up college sorority chick. Tree wakes up on one day that happens to be her birthday in a random dorm room and she goes along with the day like everything is normal. But as soon as she gets walking to a fraternity house that is throwing a party, someone in a baby face mask shows up and kills her. Strangely, she then wakes up in the same college dorm room bed that she woke up in the night before, and she is wildly confused as everything is happening the exact same way it did before she was killed. Tree then discovers that someone is out to kill her, and every time she dies, she wakes up back in the dorm room bed. She is reliving her birthday over and over again, and is getting killed every single time by the exact same person. Tree must find a way to unmask this sadistic killer that is out to get her because she has no idea which death could be her last. Will she be able to crack the puzzle and figure out why she is being targeted on her birthday of all days? Number 3. The Invisible Man. 2020. In a remake of a 1933 movie of the exact same name, this film follows Cecilia Cass who lives with an extremely smart, successful controlling optics engineer by the name of Adrian Griffin. One night when Adrian is sleeping, Cecilia sneaks out of their seaside mansion as she can no longer take the torment that his physical abuse brings her. She will soon find out that no matter how far away she gets, it will never be far enough to stop him from ruining her life. Until one day when she finds out that Adrian has passed away and she finally feels free from him. That is the case until she starts to feel that she is being haunted and someone is watching her every step and she thinks it is the spirit of Adrian that won't let her go. Or could it be that Cecilia is losing her grip on reality due to all of the abuse she suffered at the hands of Adrian? Number 2. Unfriended. 2014. One of the first movies that followed the computer screen gimmick is Unfriended. Unfriended follows a group of high school friends that are having a group Skype chat one night as they do every once in a while as they are on summer break and don't see each other in person every day. We learn through the dialogue that a year ago, a girl at their high school ended it because someone posted a cruel video of her and she couldn't take the torment that came afterwards from her peers. Well in present day, some strange entity enters their Skype chat and they can't seem to get rid of the account as they keep removing it but it continues to come back. Blair, the computer screen the movie shows, starts getting weird Facebook messages from an account with the same name as the dead girl, Laura Barnes. Blair doesn't know what to think, but when her friends start getting picked off one by one on her screen, she starts to suspect that someone is trying to avenge Laura's tragic death as they were responsible for the video being leaked online. Is this a family member of Laura's or who would have the capabilities of hacking all of their internet and computers in such a significant way? Also, how is this killer killing them all when they aren't even in the same place? Number 1. Totally Killer. 2023. In 1987, the town of North Vernon is attacked by a serial killer that killed three 16-year-old girls and was never caught. It is now 2023 and on Halloween, 17-year-old Jamie Hughes and her friend Amelia Creston want to go to a rock concert, and Jamie's mother Pam Hughes asks her husband Blake to drive the girls to the show. While alone at home, Pam is attacked and murdered by the Sweet Sixteen killer that has made his return to the town. Jamie grieves the loss of her mother and Amelia is building a time machine that her mother Lauren Creston began working on when she was a teenager in 87. Out of the blue, 
The Sweet Sixteen killer hunts Jamie down in an amusement park, and she hides inside the time machine. When he finds her and tries to stab her, he misses and hits the control panel. The conductivity of the steel of the blade makes the machine work properly, and Jamie travels back to 1987. Now she wants to try and stop the killing of the three teenagers and find who the killer is to save her mother in the future. Furthermore, she needs Lauren to fix the time machine in 2023 if she ever wants to make her way back to present day. Will Jamie be able to identify the killer, and can Lauren fix the machine to bring her back home? Well that is all for this. I'm sure there are tons of Blumhouse horrors that people love to watch that should be on this list. We'll make a terrible Blumhouse horror movie list sometime soon. Thanks for watching.